I, regardless of what you may think when you see my, my little shop, as messy it is, I really like things in, in place. Even my drawers, I have separations for all my tools and everything. And <clears throat> as you can see, this counter is just a mess. This is something I built, one of the first things I built. Again, mortise and tenon and pinned. And here are all my power tools now. I know some people don't like to keep their power tools in the case, but I don't have that wall space to put them out there, you know, at, at, at uh, easy accessibility. And <clears throat> keep them in their, in their cases that, that came in their cases, now they come in bags or don't even just come in a cardboard box. <clears throat> they help protect them. So, um, these two openings here had plans, half plans for, for doors later on and lock them because, you know, for security. But what I'm doing today is I'm going to build a wall unit here for all my tools, my, my, my planes, you know, measuring devices uh, with two doors that open up. And I've been thinking the size, the room I have to do it all. I've got these little boxes, which I really like, these metal, these metal boxes here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. These metal boxes here that, that hold uh, screws and everything. I put a shelf here temporarily just to kind of help... Uh, with a little bit above me. Look, look at this mess. Everything's all over. You know, I, I just don't have a place to do it. And I've been thinking about this for quite a while. And what am I do? Tune. Again, down here. What gave me idea is is right here. If I can show you again, move it around. If you can see this here, it's just a sheet of plywood, and this this is my diamond stone, one of three that I have plus uh, regular. Uh, whetstones, <clears throat> really, really fine whetstones. And the other day I was, I was sharpening it, and I got, got the idea. What I'm going to do, right here, I'm going to put a, a sharpening station here on, on drawer glides. It's there all the time. Pull it out and put it back. You know, I've seen these guys, they, they got these separate areas and all this jazz. I guess it's fine, you know. And, Especially if you have the room. The problem is I don't have the room. And I got to thinking, <clears throat> just like my other toolboxes I used to when I, when I installed, I had all my chisels in, 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 in drawers and everything. It was in drawers and compartments. So what I have planned here is two bays. And each unit has two doors. And this drawer will have all my chisels and everything in it. Chisels and that type of deal. And this is going to be my, my uh, sharpening station. And then whatever else. These two drawers will more than take care of all these small hand tools that I have. Small. Some of the stuff, some of the stuff I have is pretty good size, you know. And uh, I can go in later on as well. I told you before. It's actually for my, uh, my pipe clamps. Uh, uh, that big two inch uh, um, socket here is for, uh, for the, uh, the die that uh, that uh, re-threads uh, my pipe clamps in case you get damaged. I always keep uh, nipples or, or connectors on those threads just to keep them from getting banged up. And I, and I, I keep all my threads pristine and whatnot. Any, anyways, so <clears throat> this is probably the closest I ever get to, to drawing prints. Most of the stuff I can keep in my head, but this is my... Let me get this over here. This is a drawing I made for this drawer unit. It's got the, you know, the design, size, the cuts, even the, the shopping list uh, for the stock, which I just came back. Here it is. Poplar, one by, one by four. And I got the uh, two sheets of quarter inch for the bottoms. And uh, that's it. Um, I'm going to make a video of this. And uh, real simple. 
I mean, I'm just going to, no, no fancy joinery on the drawers. It's a work drawer. I'm not, I'm not concerned about, you know, pulling it out. You don't see dovetails. This is a work drawer. I'm in between projects now. I'm just wrapping this one up. And I've still got my, my buddy's bench here to start uh, gluing up. And I've got the canopy. All these are going to be on videos. The canopy for the carport that I've made. But I just got to think about this. And I can knock this out pretty quick. <clears throat> my drawer glides should be here uh, today. Uh, and uh, I'm going to start cutting what I can and uh, installing what I can. And um, probably clearing out what I need under here. Because I've, you know, when you get in cabinets, uh, and I built uh, a lot of custom cabinets, kitchens, but mainly um, uh, office stuff conference tables uh, we'd have uh, we'd have uh, features that go up at the ceiling and uh, in the reception areas with the down lights in it and uh, a lot of raised paneling did a lot of raised paneling especially in France um, so there's a lot of ways you can make these drawers especially when you get in kitchen cabinets I mean, there's all these plastic things I mean kind of ingenious but uh, all a lot of simple ways of doing this, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do mine my way. Uh, it's a different c condition here, and uh, I'll, I'll try to be, ex you know, as clear as I possibly can with it. And uh, I'll try to do more more work in this video instead of just talking about it. And then you, all of a sudden you see its aftermath. So uh, I'm gonna try to change things a little bit here. So that's it. Uh, this video is on the. Uh, this this we this table here we call in French bordel, uh, bordel, bordel means a real mess. It's like maybe your your teenager's bedroom or something like that. It's just you know it's a mess. You can't find anything, and I just you know I've had to live with it. Now uh, with these drawers, believe me, it's going to be a big transformation, and I'm still going to build this unit for my planes and whatever. I mean, God, you know, Lee Nelson planes. Uh, one my number eight's about five hundred bucks. It's uh, they're expensive. So anyways, uh, <clears throat> that's it. Uh, hope you like it. Hope you get something out of it. And mainly for, uh, again, uh, guys like me in a garage, you need space. Maybe uh, this might uh, you know, give you an idea of what to do. And again, simple. Screws, butt joints, no fancy stuff. You're, 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 I'm going to be making something that's going to be strong and, and yet function. Uh, and, and not so much for being pretty and all that. Uh, all this poplar. No, that's not bad wood. It's it's, it's it's no knots in it, but it's fairly straight, and it's uh, a Lowe's, uh, you know, and, and then the the quarter inch uh, bottom. So, and then on the drawers later, I'll be putting other trays that slide back and forth and dividers to divide things up. Depend, I'll I'll go that along. I'll I'll do that as I go along to see see where I'm going to put what I'm going to put in each drawer and how I can better arrangement. So um, that's uh, a process that uh, goes with uh, the actual, uh, you know, um, building of the unit. <clears throat> that's it. Uh, again, uh, hope some, you get something out of it. And uh, now it's time to get to work. So uh, as usual, have a good time in the shop. Work safe. And don't use any putty. <laughs> I gotta say that. That's for my Germans. My, my German buddy used to tell me, Danny, don't use any putty. <laughs> okay, we'll get to work. All right, I'm going to uh, just uh, try to give you an idea of what I'm doing here. I'm um, definitely going to bore you with a lot of pictures, but uh, here's one little peeve I have. Um, Pencils. That's a regular pencil. That could be a carpet pencil too. And look at that. Look at that point. You know, with your chisel. I mean, you've got right your your carpet, right? Uh, finished carpet, cabinet maker, or whatever you want to call yourself. Um, I, I, you know, I've got. If you'll notice, I'll have a. I got a mechanical pencil in my pouch here too. But uh, you know, I, I like them. I really do have them on my desk and everything. But you know what? Those little five millimeter. Uh, piece of lead uh, I don't know if I pressed too hard or what but you know they're always busting they're always breaking and 
and uh, I, I don't know. It's you know, you just push a button and you get more down. I, mean, I even brought another pack of uh, five millimeter lead, you know, point uh, five, I should say, uh, in with me today. But uh, I don't know. I, I was taught <laughs> by my German buddy Franz to uh, sharpen your pencil with your with your chisel, and that's the way I've always done it. So um, I kind of go back and forth. Anyways, uh, I uh, I checked all my material uh, with my uh, uh, you know dial indicator to see how how much difference there was, and there wasn't really much. Uh, I really don't want to have to run them through the join you know joiner again. And uh, uh, actually, I sized them; they're pretty close, and I, and I, I with with the. Uh, the parts that I need, you know, the main, the, the main uh, body of the of the unit, uh, as well as the, the actual drawers, I was able to uh, uh, arrange the boards such to where it's going to be okay, just like that. They're pretty straight, uh, you know. Uh, again, for a box store and something like that, you, you really can't beat it, uh, unless you really want to go through the you know, the rigors of uh, getting rough stock and, and planing it down by hand, you know, I mean, no, there's nothing wrong with that. If you like to do it, it's fine. But, man, I, you know, I've done so much of it. I'm 70, I'm, oh, I'll be 72 this September. So uh, I've done all that. And uh, it's just, uh, it's, I don't need to practice anymore. <laughs> so uh, where it comes out a little bit easier for me, I'll, I'll just uh, kind of go that way. So I'm gonna I'm cutting some stock here now, and uh, I'm gonna go through the list and cut everything I can cut. Um, my again, my uh, drawer glide is supposed to be, arrive here uh, today, and they probably will later this evening. And I'm gonna be able to cut everything, but not really assemble anything until I get my drawer glides because I want to, you know, verify uh, you know the dimensions and everything. Uh, I'm, I'm sure my dimensions uh, are, are are good enough as far as you know, the length and all that, give myself room. Because <clears throat> from the face of this bench to the back wall, and I've got it, I've got it sheeted, is um, 30 inches. And uh, I checked it all the way across. It varies just uh, with an eighth of an inch. Uh, so I... Um, I, uh, I I cut all the units accordingly to where they're, they'll be uh, they'll be just right. Uh, I've got 20 inch the full extension drawer glides coming. Uh, you'll see later unless you uh, you go back to that print. Uh, I'm going to have the uh, the end uh, pieces of the uh, of the unit go all the way to the back wall. And there's going to be a, a return piece on that. That's going to screw right into the wall. And then there's another piece that's going to go on top of the uh, of the end pieces where the, the the main glides. And it's going to go. It'll fit right on the back side of that four by that's at the bottom of the bench there, the bench top. And on that, you'll see later. Uh, I'll have a, a clip. That, I'm gonna, that I screwed already into it. You'll show. You'll, you'll see it, and that will screw right into the back of the four, uh, the four by, uh, as well as the sides screwing right into the four by each side. So, I mean, this thing is going to be strong, uh, no problem. And um, like I said earlier, there are all kinds of ways of making uh, cabinets and inserting uh, drawers and drawer glides, what have you. Uh, one way I like. Quite a bit is is, is using uh, uh, dados, dados and uh, and oak oak rails, uh, the old fashioned way, and those work just just fine. So, uh, uh, anyways, uh, this is this is how this is going to be coming together, and uh, I'm going to be cutting some stock here. Let's see if we can move on here to some uh, some other uh, aspects of this build. Okay, here we go. We're uh, at the uh, at bracket uh, assembly. Um, while I'm looking for clamps, trying to figure out how I'm going to hold this thing down, 
I want to hold this bracket as, as square and as flush as I can to the edge of that board. Now, as that board is laying in, in the table where my right hand is, that's going to be resting on top of the side runners that's going to hold the, the, uh, the two exterior uh, sides of this unit. And that piece of uh, one by that's, that's up, up uh, on an end is uh, acting as the four by that it's going to be going into. If you can visualize this thing, take that whole piece and turn it 180 degrees around and up under the desk. That's how it's going to go up under that under that um, desktop, tabletop, or top bench top here. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is I'm taking another one by behind it, which is actually it, it's 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 a duplicate for the other side <clears throat> and I'm clamping it so now I'm holding the one uh, each of those uh, one buys on end firmly in place now my hands are free to position the bracket and screw it in place and I'm just giving myself a rough dimension of 10 inches off each side it doesn't have to be critical but I'm just going to even out the, uh, the, the load and uh, that's it. I uh, used some uh, three quarter screws, uh, I believe number sixes, with uh, they've got a real nice flat uh, pan head to them. And uh, I know it's overkill. Each, each uh, flange has four holes and they're staggered. And uh, you know, so I filled them, I filled all four holes up. And when I screw this thing in, in place into the uh, Four by, I'm going to put four holes there too. I mean, this thing is screwed to the back wall, screwed in behind the four by you see there in the front, and it's going to go th th uh, uh, two screws into the side of the four by four. So, I mean, this thing is really, really solid. And one other thing, it's all solid wood. In, in this case, it's popular. Poplar. I. I don't like to use plywood in, in the sense that you either can't screw in the end grain, you can, but it's not really wise, and you've always got an end grain to finish with. Now, with the exception of Baltic birch, because its end grain is beautiful. You you you, you sand that; it's always a very beautiful finish. It's very very nice for drawers, very pretty drawers. Other than that, I, you know, I, I just like solid wood. It, you can screw it in in any direction you want and uh, it does the job just fine so uh, that is all I have to say about this uh, operation all right um, on this next clip I just want to bring up a uh, technique it's nothing really uh, rocket science but uh, again if I'm you know lucky enough to be Having some uh, beginner viewers uh, watching this, this is what my videos are for. Uh, you know, people who are just beginning at this woodworking uh, hobby, and uh, you, you'd like to, you know, learn a few things. See what I'm doing there? I'm clamping two uh, of the uh, two boards, uh, three quarter, because all three quarter I'm using. And what I'm doing is I want to get an overall dimension of the board that goes in between those two. Now this board is going to go to the back, but I want this unit to be square. So I want it to be the same dimension to the back as it is to the front. And so instead of putting my tape all the way across from one four by four to the other four by four and then deducting, I'm going to put the actual wood members right there. Because sometimes you've got a piece of wood that's not exactly three quarters. It might be a little heavier, it might be a little lighter, and then you're either too loose or you're too tight. This way, and I'm double checking it, I'm, I'm reading uh, exactly what that dimension is going to be, and uh, that's what I'm going to cut my board to. And uh, uh, you know, again, it depends how precise you are with with your measuring, and, and you, if you've got a quarter inch uh, blunt pencil or you're a really uh, knife edge uh, sharp pencil. Uh, that's uh, that's where that goes. Well, excuse me for the little hiccup there, but uh, my uh, drug lights just uh, came in and I uh, had to go uh, get them, and they're on my desk right now. Uh, but I'm going to continue this uh, this segment here as to what I was talking about 
when you're trying to get some really precise measurement, you know, you don't, you don't always have to do this, but it's always good to get the stock that's in question where you're measuring. And instead of doing the arithmetic, if you can put the stock or, or something exactly relating to it uh, uh, in between and, and then get that final dimension, because I'll tell you what, uh, you know, it's, it's not always possible, but it, where, where it is possible, it's the best way to go because you'll just save yourself a lot of extra work of either being too sloppy or, or too tight. And, uh, and then again, it, it all depends on how you measure. You know, you take that to, you take that reading, and then you know you're 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 marking some big fat ugly line. You some of these lines, they're three sixteenths or or you know uh, thick uh, or like a full meter thick, uh, uh, millimeter. I mean, uh, you know, if you're dealing with something very precise, you, you need something really precise. I mean, look, when you're dovetailing, the best thing to do as far as marking with it, when you're dovetailing or, or anything like that, uh, inlay is with a knife edge, <clears throat> not even a pencil, a knife edge. And that depends what kind of knife you want to use, but, you know, you, that you that's how fine a line you want to be working to. So, again, it depends what you're doing and how you're applying it. I was just showing you how earlier when I want to locate a bracket flush, uh, instead of just putting with my finger there and then letting the screw drive it around, I actually put it up against something solid and I can press up against it and then put the screw in. Um, and here this way, uh, we, I was just showing you to get that inside dimension. I actually clamp two uh, three quarter members there. That's part of the build actual build and then i measured a difference and uh that way i can assure i'm gonna get very accurate measurements so uh, the rest of this clip it just shows uh, me cutting boards and uh, you know i don't want to bore you with me going through the list i'll just kind of uh let this go for now and i've got my glides it just came so tomorrow morning i'll uh I'll continue with the actual build now because everything is cut and I'll know how much I have to allow for uh, uh, in between the drawers, what have you, and cutting them and making the final cuts there and uh, also the likes, what have you. So with that, uh, I'm going to end this and uh, continue with the next thing. Okay. Um, I got my uh, drawer glides uh, yesterday evening and... Uh, uh, we're gonna get with it and hopefully I'm pretty sure my in my youth I know I could have done this <laughs> no problem so I was crawling around which I don't like to do but uh, I think I can get it done today anyways what I want to do is I got my whiteboard here to kind of better explain what I'm doing because uh, again this is for the beginners you know and uh, Sometimes understanding what I'm trying to relate uh, is not that clear, so uh, I made a real simple sketch here. Didn't want to put a lot of lines, a lot of dimensions on it. I think the more lines you put in, the more confusing it gets, so it's very basic. This represents what I'm dealing with. <clears throat> this here is the wall, the back wall, all right? And that black line represents the sheeting on the wall, all right? This horizontal black line going on the top, that's the top. So that's the surface of my my countertop. This here is the 4 by that goes across the whole front under the top, supporting the top. These blue lines here represent the the case that's going to house the drawer glides and the doors. <clears throat> the green line here represents the back piece on those on those on those members that go all the way through to the wall and there's a piece that goes across and that's the cleat that's going to be screwing into the plant into the, the plywood so that's how the back is get supported <clears throat> this represents the actual length of the drawer because this dimension here is about 30 is 33 and a quarter inches long and the drawer, the glides are 22, uh, tw 20 inches, 20 inches. And it's 20 inches because I'm considering the width I have here 
in the in the walkway. So uh, 20 inch, I figure, is, is, is plenty. <coughs> Full extension. This green line up on, t on top here, can you see that little green on, on top? That's the piece that goes up on top. If you remember the uh, the plan here, All right, let's see here. It's this piece right here. That's the four by four. This is the back wall back here. Here, the dotted line shows where the, the door is roughly going to be. This goes on top of those members in a heavy black line L like here. That's uh, uh, an angle, metal angle. So the wood screws to the whole uh, width of the unit and there's f uh, four brackets like this uh, that go across that screw into the um, the 4x4. Four four. The brackets are only about that long. There's four holes top and bottom and only about that wide to L bracket. More than enough. So this whole unit is going to be supported screwed to the back of the wall, screwed four brackets in the 4x4, four four, and on the ends, on the ends, you're going to have screws into the 4x4 the, the four four legs. I mean, this thing, this thing is going to be more, more than solid. So I hope the intention is you got a better idea of what I'm doing. I'm down here crawling around, I'm talking, I'm, I'm putting this back, back here, putting that over here. Now you got a better idea of what I'm doing. With this, uh, with this whiteboard uh, diagram, and uh, with that, what I'm going to start doing now is um, I'm going to start installing drawer glides. I always like to put my drawer glide before I start assembling a desk. Put a lot, I build a lot of desks and crescendos and file cabinets, <clears throat> and Especially when I was in the shop working, before I assemble everything, I would put the drawer glides on first and then assemble everything. Uh, like I said, sometimes these things came out in the shop, uh, I mean on a job site, and they were so pressed for time, uh, we had to install the drawer glides in place, and man, that, that it, uh, you know, that's, that's rough. So I'm going to be doing that, assembling the, uh, installing the drawer glides, confirming my, my lengths with uh, the layouts I have here and then um, once I get the drawer glides in I'll start um, building the the, uh, the the core the unit. One thing I like to mention this piece here I'm going to keep it probably an eighth of an inch away from the wall because you know sometimes we make everything flush and there's a little bit of discrepancy here there a little wave and now you're forcing everything back I know these two ends are going to be perfectly matched in their position to go back to the wall. So I give that little bit of room, just an eighth of an inch, and that's not that bad where when a screw goes in and it, it's going to bow a little bit, but it won't be that bad. And, and quite often, actually, it's be very, very close to the actual wall condition. So uh, uh, I just thought, I just thought, you won't see that, but unless you happen to pick it up while I'm moving it around. But if you see that little separation, that little step, that's why I'm doing that. Other than that, I'll just start, uh, start putting it together and uh, I'll probably just maybe turn the camera back on to show you, you know, what I've accomplished. Uh, what I will say before I turn it off is that when I'm installing door glides, if I have the preference, I always put my door glides at the bottom uh, of the drawer. Why, why confuse it by having to go middle and launch at you now? You're measuring or you got to make another another jig or something like that uh, and that's the only way I would do it if I had to do that I'd, I'd definitely make a jig because you'll see I'll put a camera or snapshot or something to show that when I put my door glides on my I'm gonna have a, a backstop so to speak so that I put my my member up against it and my door glide up against it and I'm I'm dead nuts you know uh, flush to the bottom that way I'm not using my fingers to feel it and all jazz or, or I'm putting a Putting a measuring a line down the middle, you know. I've seen I got well, I got to put a center line. So I'm telling you, that screw hits the grain and moves it back and forth. Uh, 
you, you know, uh, and, and the other thing is I like, I like to use uh, Vic Spitz. <clears throat> Vic Spitz, that's the original name for a bit that what it does, it centers, it centers a, uh, uh, mainly when I was hanging doors, you know, you, you, it Vic Spitz uh, the butt, which is a hinge, and you hit, you take your butts and to a Vic bit, and then now you're screwed, because we're hanging oak, and uh, oak rails, and I mean, man, uh, you know, those screws that come with the, uh, you know, with those uh, th those hinges we had, uh, you know, they, they they could snap pretty easy. So you had pre-drill everything, but that ensures that if there is a bit of a grain, which this is poplar, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, it'll be dead in that center, you know. So uh, uh, I guess that's it. Um, uh, now the main door glide will go up against this stop I'm talking about. Now, when I'm putting it on the drawer, it's offset, right? There, I'll have to make some kind of a, a jig with an offset so I have that perfect, again, alignment on, on, on every one. I'm not, I'm not relying on drawing center lines and, and holding it there. And, you know, I mean, you, you know, do what you want, but uh, you can't beat when you're up against something solid and then you're going down. You just, you can't beat it. Other than that, uh, what else? Um, I guess that's it, basically. Uh, I, I just checked to see if my back uh, uh, members uh, on a wall are, are uh, parallel and they are, because, you know, last thing you want to do is put something in, all of a sudden you're, you're pushed off the side, now you're not straight, you know. But no, my backs are, are, are dead nut square, so I checked that out. So uh, with that, I'll get to work, and uh, for me, I'll see you in a while, but for you, it's just a click, <laughs> click away, so... Uh, And here we go with that uh, click away. <laughs> so uh, I hope you can see this little jig I got there. See where I'm going to put that? I'm going to place that board now. Take a look where, where the where the screw gun and the drill motor is. Can you see my hold downs? They're resting on a piece of quarter inch uh, scrap of plywood on top of a four by four. 4x4, four four, which I'm going to resaw later and make some drawers, use it for drawers. But uh, on the ends, I have scrap poplar screwed into the ends of the 4x4. Four four. So uh, I go left and right with a right hand, right hand member, or left hand member, go f right up against the 4x4, four four, up against the, the poplar on end. And I'm flush. I'm flush at the front and I'm flush at the bottom of that member, the uh, drawer glide member. And uh, uh, these are actual, what I'm showing here are the actual drawer glides that are gonna go into the, uh, the core, the, you know, the, 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 the framework of this drawer unit. So they go to the bottom, flush to the bottom. And I mean, and, I, and by the way, I'm also drilling into the, uh, the exact set hole. I'm not going to the uh, the hole where you can adjust slide up and down, left and right. No, I'm going right into the hole, the dead nuts, uh, the locking holes. And I'm putting three screws in each. Probably going to show you right here where I'm doing that. Yeah, see, they're right, they're right in the hole. Right? I, that's the main hole. You know, these two slots, I'm not in the slots at all. I think I'm dead nuts. There, there's no way I, I need to worry about adjusting it. Now, when you're on your back and crawling in these credenzas, yeah, you've got to use the... Uh, uh, the adjustable to a lot of times, so you, you know, you're just not on the money. So, uh, now here are these are going in, uh, with the holes. And by the way, these short lights, they are just very inexpensive. They're not the, the, the you know, uh, the real heavy duty ones, but uh, they're full extension and uh, they're not bad. So, uh, you know, as long as you do your installation work properly, they'll work just fine. So, uh, there's the uh, view of work there and it's quick you know by the way those hold downs in French they're called valets uh, like you would go to a restaurant to have a valet service well uh, that's the these hold downs in French are called valets so um, <clears throat> and I got one from Blum and back east a young man who's a, a blacksmith Blum uh, he also makes other other tools even uh, even the wood uh, vices but uh, these are really, really good to hold out. So there they are. They're all, all finished. Uh, showing off my work there. So they're ready to go. Um, 
Now I'll start uh, forming the uh, the actual framework uh, for the for the drawers to go up underneath uh, the bench. So I am you know, using a new Rockwell thing I got for gluing. I, you know, I like to glue the whole the whole uh, section uh, and and both sides. So I've never used this thing before. I'm trying it. It's a little roller. Uh, I I, I kind of like. I don't know. It's I, I guess it's okay. What I don't like about it is it it's good if you're doing a lot of gluing, but it, once, once you get done and you start assembling and you're not ready to to glue up for a few minutes, this glue starts setting up. So all those little uh, ridges in there, which are really metal, you know, for to do a good job, which it does, the the glue starts setting up, so it kind of defeats the purpose. So uh, that's the one thing I would say about this. It's a good idea. If you're uh, doing a lot of gluing and you're like production line almost, you know, but uh, for something like this where I'm gluing one or two pieces and putting them together and assembling them and come back later, 15, 20 minutes later or whatever, uh, I, I would say it's not, uh, I just soon uh, put the glue on and use my squeegee. I've got a little squeegee, it's, a little, it's almost like you see a tile setter. It's got square notches in it and it, it moves the glue all around real well. And I don't put a lot. I, I coat both sides decently, but I don't have squeeze out that's all over the floor and all over the bench. I just, uh, you know, I, I put the glue in the wood. That's where it's supposed to go, right? In the wood, right? Not all over my pants, my hands, and all over the bench and floor. No, that's a, that's a waste and that's not a, not a good practice. So I'm, uh, if you can see, I've got this, uh, this uh, the, uh, the actual uh, core of the, uh, of the uh, drawer assembly, I've got my uh, squares in the corner. Uh, I keep I keep threatening to build some. I always uh, used to always have some squares where you take plywood and make a you know a, a right angle of the 45, and you put them in dados on uh, one by one by threes, one by fours, and, uh, and you get a whole bunch of them, all different sizes. For, but you know I, I haven't done it yet. Uh, I will shortly. Uh, but I got it really squared up. Uh, <clears throat> essential. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff can be done by hand. You know, uh, you just measure real. I, I realize, you know, time is money. You know, but I'll tell you, when, when you start doing a lot of real premium grade work, real premium uh, fine finish work, the methods are all really different. You, you know, you're you're really you're really working with that. And again, I know this is real, not a highball. You know, pretty much. But you know, you develop habits after a while, you know, uh, and, and you're really precise with with what you're working with, how you're putting something together. You know, it's not like you're knocking out uh, three thousand uh, uh, entry doors for a for a housing project or something, uh, you know, or you know, four thousand uh, chairs or something. You know, you. you you're you're dealing in something that's a special custom and uh this is what i did mainly in all my life in, in, uh, in, in the, when i was in a union we, we premium great shop so uh, we learned how to really do things uh, a little bit differently um it, because if you, if you you ruin one there's not another one after to pull out you've really messed up you say there's no we even we would have our our, our working teams we would always have our our, our teammate Check our dimensions, you know. And uh, one time, when uh, while I was an apprentice, and uh, uh, Heinz Heinz Berg, he asked me to check. I was embarrassed. I, what do you mean? I, I, yeah, I know you gotta check me. I said, check you. You know, I, I thought he was kidding me. But uh, yeah, no, he wanted me to make sure because he, he told me, no, no, I can make mistakes too. You know, you can't afford to make mistakes, which is true. So uh, yeah, it takes it takes a little longer. Definitely takes longer. It's not fast, and it's not for everyone. But uh, it, it's a good way to learn proper methods and uh, be precise. And uh, even when I was running crews, uh, the guys I held were highly, uh, one of the fastest were the guys that I knew. Uh, if I gave him something, he would do it once and it'd be done. Now he, didn't have, he didn't have to go back four or five times and rework something. I see him tearing something apart, he made a mistake. So uh, there's a there's a two the, the two units go in the middle for the uh, uh, 
uh, the assembly of the, uh, the unit that goes underneath. <clears throat> and uh, there, I'm wiping a little bit of glue off. I'll tell you, it's not much here. Uh, and I like it to have a little bit of squeeze out, uh, which is not, not bad at all, but uh, it ain't dripping all over my bench, that's for sure. So, um, this next uh, shot is the installation of this uh, centerpiece. And here's another, now, for, again, for a beginner. <clears throat> this is a pretty simple way to center it because this is going in the center. It's not a, not a, uh, uh, you know, two foot on one side and one foot on the other. It's a, this unit's going dead in the middle. So you get the overall like I'm getting there and I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out what the center is. I'm gonna make a little center line there with my, uh, a little square and I'll make that center line go right down and face that one by that's 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 you know that's uh laying flat and I can put that center line right on the middle of those two uh three quarter pieces and that way I know in that sense it's centered that way and then you'll see me uh get uh, a uh, scrap piece of wood and I'll mark it each end just to verify, you know, the, you know, the actual uh, uh, offset for both of them. <clears throat> and uh, again, this is just habits, you know, of just doing things. Sometimes you can find you might have overlooked something or made a mistake. You know, it happens to the best of us, but you get the kind of habits and this is why the mistakes don't come as often because you, you catch them before they actually take place. So I've got it located in the center. Now I want to make sure it's in line because if you screw something in place and it's not aligned up, I mean, it's almost impossible to get back without ripping the, uh, you know, the board apart or something. Now that's why it's so important before you shoot a nail or, or put a screw in and make sure it is straight, it's in line and, and then screw it or, or, or shoot a nail in it, you know. And there again, this whole, this whole unit could have been shot with uh, gun nails. I've got all kinds of gun nails, uh, finish and uh, and heavy framing. So, but I, I always screwed a lot of stuff and many of my cases work like this. So, uh, um, you know, if you finish nail, gun nails never even, wasn't even a, a question. <laughs> it, it was all gonna be screwed, glued and screwed. So, uh, just about got this centerpiece uh, in place here, and for the next, uh, I actually put two two screw actually two screws on each end, on each board, so a total of four in that section. There's two, there's two one uh, uh, three quarter pieces glued together and screwed together. By the way, if you see the screws two on end, and then the other two in the middle kind of stagger, that's a very common way of of, of even basic framing. When you're putting two boards together, you put two at the end, and then the other ones are one, but the one goes at the bottom, one goes at the top, one goes at the bottom, one goes at the top, and then it ends with two again. Very, again, basic way of uh, uh, bringing two pieces together and making them out of one unit, and how you, the nailing pattern should be. Uh, very common. So I'm, uh, again, I'm, I'm securing the, the back end with that uh with that piece that's its sole purpose is to hold the back end of the drawers uh in this particular unit that's the way it, it's uh i designed it to be there's a lot of ways to do these things clips and all kinds of stuff they have but uh, this is how i went about it and uh that's uh pretty much it for this one unit. I'm going to put two more screws on the underside. I'm going to have to get, I'm going to have to get to, yeah, from, from, from the underside to get those two screws in. There's two screws going each uh, backside of the, of the member there. Now, <clears throat> this, this is going to be so far a mystery. What I got up here. Oh, I'm still screwing the back. Oh, I see. I'm still screwing the back in that, uh, that piece. There we go. Pretty much.
pretty simple. You know, this this brings something to mind about being simplicity. I one of the apprentice. I I was given a project very simple to do, and uh, Gunner said to me, "You know, Danny, uh, this is really simple, but be careful, you can mess up." And I was, you know, pretty cocky in a way, and I told him he mess up. He says, "A lot of times, even with the best of us, something really, really simple to do." You kind of overlook it, your mind wanders, next thing you know, <laughs> you're reworking it, or you're trying to hide a screw up that you made. It is so true. I'll tell you, it is so true. Uh, here, I put a dado, sta a dado sta uh, a blaze in, and I'm cutting the uh, the quarter inch for uh, a lot of my uh, my members for the uh, quarter inch paneling. But it is so true, you know, uh, when you're, when you're doing, this is a real simple project. I mean, Anyone watch this who really knows anything about the trade, you'd laugh at it. He probably turned it off. This is uh, this is uh, real basic, simple stuff, and I'm not doing anything exotic. I'm using really, you know, they would think cheap wood. Uh, poplar is not really thought of that much, and I'm making the whole thing out of poplar. And uh, again, I don't like using plywood. Some guys would probably use um, uh, MDF. You know, I'd like to show you something. People tell me they don't get. Uh, Look at my data blades. I get all these uh, these shims. I mean, they're all different sizes. I mean, uh, they're uh, I think they, they come in pairs of two and three of the same size. And, I mean, really, really fine sizes. And they came with my my data my data set. And I hear guys are often you know time and again, time and again, especially when we talk about box joints. You know, they got to put a a card or something. I got a business card in between uh, because you want you want to make two of your box joints a little bit different. Uh, they fit right and I'm saying are you kidding I'm thinking are you kidding so this is this is the make that I, I bought there they are and they gave me an old set of dados are good these dado blades are really good and I've used a lot of, of all kinds even those kinds you screw you you, you you can dial them up as one blade and you can dial up and it really wobbles really weird scary but uh, use all kinds but no I, I can't uh, I can't complain about these, you know, and you can, boy, with, with those shims, you can get that thing dead enough to what dimension you want. So, uh, I just thought I'd mention that about that, boy. Now, here's a piece of scrap of uh, that one inch uh, Ponderosa pine I had, and this is going to be my panel for my uh, sharpening station which is what gave me this idea of these four doors. Uh, my homes, my, my, my uh, diamond uh, stones and everything, you know, uh, uh, it's going to be here. And this door front is going to be a different situation. Uh, I finally thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piano hinge on the door front and I'm going to put a uh, touch latch behind it so that uh, well, I, I can pull it open like regular door and then uh, let, it, let, it, let it lay down flat, which won't bother me at all while I'm holding my, uh, uh, sharpening my uh, uh, my stones, you know, so my, my stones, my, my chisels and my, my uh, irons, what have you, uh, won't, won't bother me a bit. But, uh, you know, and if worse comes to worse, no big deal. I just put a, a scrap piece of plywood up on, right up on top of my desk and uh, my table there and just hone it. So the main thing is when I'm dovetailing and doing something with the chisel, I just turn right around and uh, there's my sharpening stone. You hit it a little bit. So I'm not looking all over the place and, you know, trying to go over the shop. It's right there. So it's, it's going to work out really good. So the drawers are made of, uh, I'm putting on the uh, uh, the other uh, drawer glide member. And uh, uh, that's it. Uh, we're just moving right along here. And uh, uh, later, I gotta go bowling tomorrow night, so uh, I won't be doing anything tomorrow. I'm gonna go bowling. And, and then. Uh, uh, probably Thursday or Friday for sure is when I'll work on the uh, on the trades on the inside. Uh, uh, 
arranging things. I mean, this is this is really such a relief to be able to get things in order to some extent. And then when I get to work on the uh, the wall, the wall unit, the tool chest, I've, I've looked at a lot of guys, what they've done. And uh, again, I'm not going to Sherry Wood and all this yet. I'm going to something pretty basic, but uh, you know, there's my little, there's my little drawer. There's the other one. First and second one, uh, my uh, 20 under done. This is something I want to talk about. <clears throat> Take a look at that cutter. I wish I would turn my dog on camera on sooner. See that cutter in there? I got a two inch cutter in there. I always use a sheet of MDF in front of my, even when I was in France, and my, and I had some high powered, I mean some high powered shaper. No nonsense shaper. But look, you see that red, red ring? I got a whole assortment of, this is, this is a woodpecker uh, uh, router table. <clears throat> Huge router at the bottom. That router at the bottom, I forgot. It's, it's a monster. Um, this is my idea. I take a, I take a piece of uh, MDF and I turn the motor on and I secure one end because I have to. My, my, my other shape, I can, just, I can just move back and forth, you know, plain. But this is not just, you know, you know how these things are. So I have to take one end and uh, put it on a little angle, secure one end, and then I turn the motor on and I back that uh, MDF right into the cutter. Just to the, and I already got marks as how high or how wide I want that cutter. And that cutter is exact. There's no holes in there where you, something could drop in or, uh, and when you visualize this in a huge full on uh, cutter, big, a big machine, you see guys with just, just the end walls and big old caps. And, and this, is, this is how you get hurt. You know, you, you, you take things for granted, especially if you've done it a while. And you know, let's say you're a real good uh, mechanic, you know, at the machine, you just take things for granted. I'm telling you, it's just, it's not wise. Uh, I, I mean, how, you know, how can you, I don't know, you know, uh, I, like I said, the shapers we have are huge and, and some of the work we did was that way. That's why they're big because we had some, you know, if you ever seen any chateaus in, in the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the fortifications on the, on the big gates, uh, you know, where we're re, you know, re, revamping some of these things that uh, either got weathered or blown up in a war, or, or they just was uh, a lack of, you know, uh, uh, finances to keep, take care of them. And we come in and we redo it where they got to. Some of these members are huge, and it's oak. Man, I mean, I, you know, there's no pine out there uh, that we uh, that we dealt with. It's all hardwoods, you know, oak, walnut. Uh, other kind of exotic woods that came from Africa and, and South America. I have no no idea what the names were, but uh, uh, you know, uh, like I said, uh, shortly after I left, uh, uh, retired a girl who was supposed to you know, be one of the up and coming foremen in the shop. I, you know, she goes to school and learn all that stuff, but yet she, I had to set up the, uh, the the shapers were all the time, and I try to I, every time I show her this, this method of doing something, especially with one uh, project that they would they would run the small pieces, and uh, I find out I'm in I'm in a town and getting some baguettes for uh, for dinner, and, and uh, I see a couple of guys from the shop. Uh, they told me she cut her th her thumb, her index finger, part of her. Uh, half of her middle finger and a tip of her ring finger on her right hand. And she was right handed. I mean, ah, horrible. beautiful girl. I think 20, 21, I think she was 22, maybe at the moment. Beautiful girl. Oh, and I kind of got an idea what project she was doing to, to, to get that kind of a, oh, anyways, uh, you know, this thing here for me is a toy. It's just like my little six inch uh, quarter cable uh, joiners like a toy, but they work really well. They work like a full on big machine and uh, you got to treat them that way. And uh, of course, if you treat them well too, they'll, they'll work well, they'll stay, they'll stay uh, in good shape. And so other than that, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, there's the, uh, the pull. That's the little finger pull. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna, 
tomorrow I'll get uh, the uh, piano hinge and the touch latch for that one bay. But, uh, you know, there, there I'm showing you how the, the, the insert, I've got several of these inserts, all different sizes. And uh, again, with the, uh, the MEF. So that's the way to go with that. Um, it went well. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, I'm really glad I took the time to do it, even though I'm pressed to get some of the things done. Um, I'll get as much as I can in there. I'm, I, I know I can't put everything in there, but uh, it, it's going to be a big help to begin with. So uh, thanks uh, for watching. I hope uh, you, you get something out of it, especially if uh, some of you out there are young, uh, you know, the young beginners. So this is what this uh, my videos are for and after the hardcore guys know a lot. There's a lot of people out there, men and women. I mean, they are really, really talented and they do the real fine stuff. Uh, I don't do this for a living. Uh, I don't have to make a living at it. I've done it. I'm retired. This is fun. This is playtime for me. And uh, I've been asked to do things, but I you know, unfortunately, I, you know, I, I just don't want to do that anymore. I just do stuff around the house and, uh, things of that nature. Um, I enjoy what I do, but mainly I'm hoping it, you know, help, uh, people are just starting out who are afraid to maybe you know, ask questions or whatnot. Uh, there's my email address. Uh, got any questions or comments or whatever. I don't have a website. Uh, give me a shout that way. And, uh, as always, I want to tell you, thanks again for watching. Have a good time. In the shop today, work safe, and as always, don't use any putty. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. See you in the next one.